I've just seen another post in Nicaragua where thousands are coming to faith and this revival that is starting. It's all about the worship. And what we're going to be talking today in our new Fire Catchers chat with Rosie Robinson is the power of worship intercession and what God has been showing Rosie in worship intercession with flags. Welcome to Firecatcher's chat. We haven't had a chat in a long while. Uh, I think it's due time. And I'm so excited to bring back Rosie Robinson. If you have been a firecatcher for a long time, she will be known to you. Rosie in recent years has taken kind of a hiatus from Firecatcher's group uh, and even a little bit of worship flags for a while as she has been working on a bachelor degree and now on her master's. But there is something that the Lord is drawing her back into, back to <laughs> her first love. Ooh. Welcome, Rosie Robinson. It's a privilege to be back in our space, your space. God's space as uh, as a worshiper and just this sorry his presence is strong I just allow for that um just this new learning opportunity I had with flags in my marketplace where I work and just um just this triumphant thing that took place so yeah so let's so I love that okay you just introduced this topic flags in the marketplace um, worship in the marketplace as a flag intercessor. So particularly we had kind of talked just before we came on to the video that what is remarkable about you, Rosie, and I think that God is raising more in uh, more and more people like you is those that know that they're worship intercessors, those that know that they are called to lift up flags and that flags, the worship flags they actually mean something. They're prophetic in their nature and they are releasing and declaring. Uh, Jeremiah 50 verse two says, lift up a banner and declare to the nations. We understand that flags have a declaration that they're doing. And so tell us what happened um, in the school where you were working. Where to begin? Once a worshiper, always a worshiper. So that's a baseline foundation that we all stand upon. Our category specifically is flags, but for at least the last seven years, it, it's just because I've been navigating family and doing my degree, um, relationships, transitions, things that happened. I realized a year had passed that I had not held a flag in my hand and it began to grieve me, but it's just, it was the nature, the season where I was, what was happening. My husband and I, we were living uh in a girlfriend's home. She needed to sell the house. It was a couple months before I found a new job. My husband and I had just had COVID, you know, out two months. So here's this job that came, I interviewed for um, as an instructional aide. My job was working one-on-one -on -one with scholars or kids in special ed specifically. I have not been in the world for a long, long time. I've been, uh, prior to this, I was working for a Christian-based recovery office. I was an office manager coming into sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. So teenage kids who are just coming out of two years of, of COVID hostility, hostage behavior. So think spirits. As worshipers, we have to be able to track our our thought process. I was hired on 1010. John 1010 is a foundation scripture for me and Zoe, and that's another piece. So that was one mark. So from October to Thanksgiving, I don't like this job. I can feel the weight of the world. The spirits are starting to descend. I'm probably the one and only woman of God, Christian there. Uh, population of the students, 150 to 200, mostly Hispanic, but these kids have been through trauma. This is what I know as far as a mental health foundation for part of what's taking place in this situation. Teachers back in after a two-year hiatus, also full of a lot of trauma. And I'm seeing this by the spirit, the level of oppression on these children, on new people, just as a, as a seer, as a prophetic seer, began to just feel the weight of it. And I would come home and share with Freddie. And it was things like behavioral children, um, feral, education, baseline, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders asking me how to tell time on a clock. Social skills, they have, they missed so much having to be locked up in COVID. My point in that foundation there is to 
give an understanding as a, as a minister carrying an anointing. I am walking in a natural base mentality, doing a job. This is not, as far as I was aware, ministry calling, <laughs> you know, those things. By Thanksgiving, my husband and I came down sick with RSV. My physical capacity, let alone mentality to worship or intercede or take ground or any of that stuff. I would just literally show up, park the car, and I'd be like, Lord bless them. Help me just get through the day. And I'm I'm being as honest and genuine. You know, I have been a flag minister for almost 30 years. This was horrifying because these were children that were surrendering to, you know, any identity goes. And, you know, girls announcing in a classroom that I'm in love with another girl and, you know, drugs being found in the bathrooms and violence in the hallways and, you know, new students who were transferred in because they'd already beat up three or four other students at another school. And now they're coming at, you know, teachers like this saying, what would you do if it was real? And I would come home and, you know, I'm a little farm girl, you know, but mighty by the spirit. My husband, on the other hand, grew up through high school in um, LA area. And so those kinds of stories and dynamics were starting to really frighten him. Every single day, I'm asking God for one confirmation, day after day after day, and he would give it. So I'd hang in there. And then by Christmas, I had a two-week break. That's when God began to show up. My husband and I had moved into this, what we love, this little basement apartment, but it doesn't give me a lot of room for, you know, for what I, you know, it is flagging. But I pick them up and I move them. For two solid weeks, God showed up. My little space in our apartment just sort of exploded because what he went after was my creative arts. So I was coloring and I was just pulling things out of storage and, you know, laying in my flags and wrapping them in me. And as I would surrender, this vision for this school began to open. And then when I went back, he said, now start navigating flags in. I would go to school just like a student. I would just carry my backpack because I would have, you know, notebooks and stuff that, um, you know, I needed for my one-on-one -on -one scholar. And then I added, it would allow me like five flags. So I would slip it like this. And I would go to school. And so I began to recognize, okay, this is strategic. That was enough to start breaking some things open. And then one day I had an opportunity after school. I had my Catch the Fire worship flag. He has done great things. And I had one moment opportunity. Now this is world school. I mean, they don't know who, who cares. They just love the difference, the diversity. He has done great things. I pulled them out. I began to just worship them in the, in the great, what's called the great hall of the school, sort of an assembly room. And the next day, that flag, that dragon, was laying in a box that said, free. God showed me I had captured the enemy's flag. I didn't know it was a flag at the time. It was folded, like, maybe like this size, just in this box that said free stuff, some notebooks and stuff. And then just that color, I grabbed it put it in with the notebook and brought it home. But when I opened it up and I saw what happened, and then two days later, revival broke out at this school. And what that looked like, I, I had been the only black representation at this school. I think there were two black kids, but as far as um, educators, I was it. in a diversity kind of inclusion. They really wanted to include and give me space to do lots of things. That was up to something when I opened that flag and I saw that and the color scheme. So for me, it was a direct connection. And then when this thing happened in this classroom, so okay, picture a portable classroom. And day after day, I began to realize that the glory of God was setting on it like the ark. I knew it was happening. I knew it. When this transition happened, when I knew by sign and wonder that God had given me the enemy's flag, I knew I had to watch for what what did I just, what were the spoils of war that God was just taking? So now this work, now this job has a whole different perspective. On February 3rd, which happened to be my birthday, I'm in a humanities classroom, the portable classroom. I have about 30 kids, one teacher, white, female, Hispanic girls, two or three, primarily Hispanic boys. Now, please understand, these children come from south end of town kind of thug mentality, these are the ones who have been 
the turf wars in the spirit, but God was winning their hearts to me. They would give me the time of day. And on this particular day, so we were just into Black History Month, right? So all eyes are on Rosie Robinson. She's going to represent. She, you know, look, ain't God good? He brought us some representation. And I'm being facetious, but serious by the spirit. It was, it was a favor to unlock this thing. They gave the floor to me. So she had asked the children this question. Tell me what racism looks like or means to you. And then all of a sudden, the lovely white teacher looked at me in the eye. She said, Rosie, what does racism look like or mean to you? And that's when the atmosphere, no flag intended, needed, just went. And I was like, I knew the one thing I needed to do in that moment because the spirit of God was in me. I am trying not to you know, do this, which is what I usually do. He had set himself in that room. And I looked at her and the only thing I knew to do was if I, whatever's coming out of my mouth next needs to be undercover and it has to have a yes right now. So I looked at her and I said, are you sure you would like me to answer that truthfully? Who do we know is the spirit of truth? She said, yes, please do. And I did and held that room, two classes. I'm only in there for one, but the wind of God just moved. They didn't know it. I did because without hesitation, Within 10 to 15 minutes, I had Hispanic boys in tears sobbing, girls running for tissue, the teacher sobbing, and God is moving, and I'm just moving, and I'm asking questions. I'm not preaching. I'm asking questions, and I'm reflecting, and I'm making them think about some things, and stuff starting to happen, all in the name of racism and bringing truth. And what are you doing? What is that? It's not black and white. It's what you think. I asked them this one question. Where does racism start? God said this. It starts with a thought. Racism starts with a thought. And then I extrapolated them into, you know, it's, it's that moment where you choose to take a picture of somebody without their permission and then you're posting it up on social media with horrible things about it. It's that right there. Just this thing, this truth came at these children and held them and their tears are streaming down their face. And all of a sudden, a Hispanic seventh grade boy, he's sitting down and out of his mouth, he starts telling us about this younger girl who had been molesting him at another school, holding him down. And he finally fought back and she told on him for hurting her and he got kicked out of school. And another Hispanic boy, eighth grade kid, this kid, my husband's 6'4", this kid is at least 6'2", he's huge. He's the one who came at a teacher like this. But in that moment, by this spirit of God, his confession, sobbing you know all these men have been coming into his home and abusing his mother who's like you know violence and drugs and kids are just the teacher she had gone through it too this trauma-based mechanism because in one moment that dragon that spirit had been captured and god wanted me to know it he wanted us to know it. It's the equivalent today of what we would call worship intercessors. I didn't even know I had the assignment. And within a less than a week, I had to resign. The assignment was over. And the more the glory was upon me, the more I would go into a classroom and see these manifestations of these children, like right in front of me. What our epidemic is here, kids in suicide. And I had to see it by the spirit, apprehend the one thing that I knew, my population, my assignment, the, the gift, the why and the what of it. And that's the ground that God gave to just power move in and out of one location because of who I knew I am. Finally, to be able to put it all together, I could, then it got to be fun. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Finally, you know, now I'm okay to get up in the morning. Now I wanted God to give me this group of kids because I knew what to do. And they were going to, you know, hand it to me. God's like, nope, get out get out. And finally, when I had a conversation with my husband, and to this degree, may I just say, I, I'm going to go old school right here. Do not grab territory if you do not have covering that is in proper alignment from your mother and father to grandma and grandpa. If you're single to as a married man or woman, your, your spouse better be locked down because I'm telling you at this dimension, if you are now being transitioned by the spirit and I release it into worship intercession for territories, God is going to give them to us. I'm telling you. So it's knowing what, what we are carrying. It's 
knowing where you stand and not allowing any other source to mount you there. It's knowing that in this hour, by the Spirit, there is such a tremendous need for worshipers. So yes, what we're seeing in the church or, you know, in the Spirit as a revival, I, I concur, but I would, I want to alter the word for us, specific flag ministers. This is specific. If you are a dancer on a team, then take your team. But there are a few, you know, of of you us that we, you know, we we go as a standard. We are the standard, but we also have covering and alignment. When this happened, the first thing I did was check in with Andrea. Hello. <laughs> I check in with um, Apostle Joe Brown, who's my International um, Certificate of Completion School of Flag Ministry. I had this powerful experience. So who are my flag coverings? Then, of course, my pastor, God himself, of course, he, you know, waits for that. But every move I made, I was checking with my educators, my principal. Sure. Sure. Are you sure you want me to answer that? Sure. And I learned who I am. I am a standard. (laughs) Where my feet walk, he gives it to me because the footsteps of the righteous are ordered. He ordered me to be there. So of course he's going to just, you know, here, take it. I have never in all my years known this kind of war. When the enemy comes in like a flood, I will lift up a standard against them. I am that standard. <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's always been that, but I just realized that. Needless to say, the payoff two days ago, the glory of God came upon me and God blew open a v- open vision as I have never seen before. And I am running through what I would only conclude is today as a mega church. And I am carrying the biggest flag I have ever seen. I'm running with a fire that I have never known. And I hit that stage and it turns to this gold and this glory reigning, and you know, that. And as I'm falling, as he's giving me that transfer, I hear myself screaming. My husband's like, what is happening? And I said, I want that. I want that. And that's what's coming. That's what's here. That's what's ours in this rushing mighty river. This is not a cookie cutter fire. This is a fire, Andrea, for a flag. That is the third time I have kind of heard that story. The first time you wrote it to me and the set and the second time you spoke it to me. And just now, every time there's so much spirit on this. And what I love about your expression and I just feel like that God is really raising up worship intercessors who know who they are. And the response is going to be in the marketplace. It will not necessarily be in churches and that there's, we were just talking about garments or no garments before you're not going to wear a garment in your marketplace. Like you are the um the flag that you're you're you are the standard but what is happening in the season in this hour that we are in 2023 the shaking of the lord the tearing down of the of the of the banners of the enemy bringing them down raising a standard of the lord this is what revival looks like in the marketplace it is incredible the outpouring of worship in churches where people will not leave but yeah. but we still have to take it to the marketplace um yeah. and and break down those capture the flag you said it capture the flag it is a new game rosie would you pray a prayer of impartation over the worship intercessors in this season it would be my privilege before i do i do want to just warn those who are about to receive I never thought I would say anything like this, Andrea, but here it is. This impartation is not for everyone and it might not be for you yet. So if you have that woe from God right now by the spirit, don't receive it. Come back to this, step aside and go, okay, Lord, what what needs to happen? Because this deposit needs wisdom and understanding. So before I impart, that's my warning. And the scripture that accompanies at least this transition this transfer one uh psalm 106 verse 8 nevertheless he saved them for his name's sake that he might have his mighty power to be known and so in that lord i 
appreciate and I thank you for this mighty power that you are imparting into flags and into flag ministry and into worship intercessors that you might be known. And I release this fire upon the worship intercessors in this hour to blaze, to set blazes and to bring down foundations according to Jeremiah, to bring down and to build up foundations in our cities, in our schools, in our states, in our nations, right from home. This is the hour for the fire of our ministry of our flags to be seen and to be known and to be strategized, to be partnered with by heaven and heard. And I release it into your hands as they receive it into theirs and distribute it by your spirit for your glory and for our benefit in the mighty name of Jesus as we go forth first in peace and then in love and only love. Amen. Thank you for being, speaking with, with me um, on the video. Thank you for the privilege to hear what you heard, recognize that it needed a moment, <laughs> a Cairo season and allowing for that to happen. And so may God return that unto you as you are taking flags to nations in just a few days yourself. Rosie and I keep uh, talking a little bit more. She explains a little bit more about the intercession with her flags and what was happening in her classroom. Stay tuned for a little bit more. Lots of new things to know by the spirit and the heavenly hosts are just so excited to be a part of, you know, what, who we are and what we do. We're in a season of new awareness. Absolutely. That God is going to be breaking down strongholds and we're going to see more clearly the strongholds that are, that are in the atmosphere. I think that we are, God is waking us up in our own communities, in our own jobs. What I appreciated what you had said was that this was a job that you didn't like and you didn't have spiritual eyes to see what was going on until it really jumped out at you <laughs> in that free box, right? Like you didn't, there was a, there was a building, but you didn't see the actual, the fuller picture until you kind of got, you, you were shocked out of it. And I feel like that in this season, uh, that is one of the reasons why I like to go to other nations is because I'm very aware of what I carry when I'm in an, when I, when I'm in another environment and when I'm in another realm. Uh, but when we're in our own safe realm, you know, the normal irritances, the normal um, frustrations in our job and the people that we're ministering to that we lose sight of, of what God is doing. And God actually wants to bring, he wants to break um, these things down and flags are not just a pretty, like I keep saying this, they're not just a pretty piece of fabric. They are powerful for the breaking, bringing down a stronghold. They declare things to the nations and it is, and the flag bearer goes before the army. Andrea, I've had times where I just, you know, when I was home that week for Christmas break and just now, you know, I get when Job said, though he slay me, yeah, well, I praise him because, you know, there really is nothing else. And because I carried that and even without knowing, you know, just because this wasn't in my hand doing it in my thing, it was in my hand. What is in your hand? Moses, I will always come back to that verse. Moses said, a stick. And what did God do with it? Extended it and parted the Red Sea, the miraculous. We should expect the miraculous. When we extend his staff of worship, Red Seas should now be parting. By the Spirit, we should expect nothing less. Because what's coming behind us, we are now the voice of the deliverers. We are now the ones. They all are. But, but the anointing, the transfer, the differentiation is a knowing what to anticipate and expect. It's a big responsibility to know what you're up to, what you're doing, and how to transfer wealth and you know, spoils of war, all that stuff. I see you coming into a new authority and you are going to be breaking the strongholds over much, many workplaces. God is calling you into dark places. He is calling you into dark places and hard places, but he is the rock. Like he is the most hard. 
<laughs> that you are protected against anything that the enemy throws at you, that you, you have a physical reminder of what God can do through you and that, and you are going to re- need that reminder to know who you are. There cannot be um, a moment that you are not vigilant in what you're called to, but the Lord will protect you and he is your covering. He is your covering. If people want more information about how to, you know, for themselves or others, I'm ready because God made me ready because this was the moment to release.